Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story. It will grip you and have you rooting for someone and against someone else. You will want to binge episode after episode to see what happens next until it all finishes with a hopefully satisfying conclusion. And today, we're doing something a little different. This story will be something very different actually, as we look at two separate players at one time, who both become very intertwined with each other until the bitter end. It is a unique tale that has only ever taken place once on Survivor, and with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. For reference, we will only be observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. At the very end of this video, I will tell you what happened to both of these players since this season aired. However, I will not spoil anything until that designated segment. And before we start, I want to thank you all for watching what I make and ultimately supporting what I do here with liking, commenting, and sharing. It means a lot and it makes me financially able to make more and more great in-depth content for you all. If you want to help make this channel grow and continue making in-depth videos, then consider joining me on Patreon. For only a few bucks a month, you can pick who I make videos about, watch all of this channel's content early, and of course, get an exclusive video each month. Thank you for your support. 39 days, 18 all-stars, one survivor. Boston Rob, AKA the Rob Father, previously played on Survivor's fourth season, Marquesas, and now he returns for their eighth season in Survivor All-Stars. His time on Marquesas was quite memorable, despite him being the first boot when the tribes merged. He had no issue stirring up trouble, causing fights, and generally just trying to control how the game was being played by everyone. He did have some iconic confessionals, and he just made for great TV. However, he was a loose cannon when it came to how the game was played. He romantically aligned himself with Sarah Jones, but at the tribe swap, they got separated and she was voted out. He was essentially a lone wolf trying to make everyone else be a part of his pack. Out of everyone who plays on All Stars, Boston Rob is the one I recommend the most watching my original video about. Get to know his Marquesas game, then come back to this video and we will explore the evolution of him and his game. Amber Burkich was a castaway who returned from her time on Survivor's second season, Survivor the Australian Outback, to play on Survivor's eighth season, Survivor All-Stars. Her time on the Australian Outback had her strategically as Jerry Manthe's sidekick all season, and her character moments mostly focused on her love for food and how that was all she was really thinking about even when Jerry was using that same food as a metaphor for sex. She ended up getting pretty far in the game last time, but that was mostly due to her tribe's alliance having the numbers through the post-merge game. The reality is that neither of these players have individually shown us prior to this season that they are future winner material. In fact, they both have huge glaring flaws that would stop each of them from reaching the end or winning if they did get there. But maybe, just maybe, if they make some tweaks and they combine forces, then they can become one super player, but with two votes. But if either of them goes home too early, then it would likely be game over for them both. What is important to know about Survivor All-Stars is how the tribes are separated. For the first time ever, there are actually three tribes of six. The Mogo Mogo and Saboga tribe each have two former winners, and Shapara, the tribe that Boston Rob is on, has none. The Shapara tribe consists of Rob Sesternino, Sue Hawk, Boston Rob, Amber Burkich, Alicia Calloway, and Big Tom. Shapara is definitely the outlier tribe this season with no winners, meaning there are no big targets immediately on the board. Now, unlike in past seasons, there is no marooning by Jeff. The players get dropped off at their beach with a machete and a map to the water well, and that's it meager supplies at best. In Boston Rob's first confessional of the season, we hear some incredible foreshadowing by him. He says that Survivor All-Stars is going to be so cutthroat, it won't be any fun. And this same confessional also highlights what makes him so great at talking to us. He loves to make us as the audience feel like we are in on his thoughts and secrets when he says things like, you hear me and you understand. All-Star Survivor is gonna be so cutthroat, it's not even gonna be fun. Nobody trusts anybody. 
Nobody. Nobody trusts anybody. Do you understand? The Shapara tribe then finds their water hole and it doesn't look clean at all. In fact, it looks really nasty. Boston Rob explains how they are in some dire circumstances with this water that needs to be boiled to be clean enough to drink and yet they don't have any fire to do so. Once again, he asks us a question to make us feel like we are a part of his conversation and not as if we are just being talked to. I mean, it's just like they dropped you off. All right, go. Go ahead. There's a cooking pot and a machete. A water source. You do. As Shapira is trying to figure out where to build their shelter, we hear from Rob in another stroke of his confessional brilliance. He says once again he is on the stupid tribe and he is the only smart one there again. Oh, the pain and agony of being the only smart one. That's what he wants us to feel. While this was not true in Marquesas, and it could be argued it isn't even true here, it doesn't matter. Boston Rob is painting us a picture and crafting a narrative for us that has us thinking his way, even if all the facts don't line up with what he is saying. I didn't know I was gonna be again on the buffoon tribe, but uh, apparently I'm the brains behind this operation, so we're gonna have to make it work somehow. Sue, unlike the rest of Shapara, doesn't care if the water is dirty. She's drinking it anyways. So when Boston Rob finds this out, he calls her name and then paints it to us like, oh, if she gets sick and leaves, that hurts the tribe as a whole. I drank four big coconut. I left the coconut shell up there. It's like three quarters Can of a coconut shell. Can anybody say dumbass? I don't know what Sue is up to. If you get sick and you have to check out of this game, you're leaving five other people here to do the job of six. The next day, Rob did not sleep well, so he wants to work on fixing the shelter. However, Shapara still doesn't have fire, and Alicia wants to focus on that instead. Do they agree to work on their own separate things and just split up? Uh, no, they both instead unnecessarily fight with each other in front of everyone. There's not one person here doesn't understand that you two have not been able to sleep. Six people haven't had water. That's what I'm thinking. Been they busting are? our ass trying to make fire since we got him. Never heard so much crybaby titty sucking in all my life. We've bitched about the clothes, we've bitched about the weather, and we bitched that God ain't give us no water. Boston Rob then labels Alicia as a drama queen and says, if you're looking for the facts, you come to him and he will give them to you. In a way, he is being the Rob father with us right now. We don't need to think for ourselves. Boston Rob will tell us the facts and that's all we need to know. I'm not yelling, I'm just saying, call it like it is. I am calling it like it is, we just talked about it. We all are calling it like it is. What can I say about Alicia? She's a drama queen. You want the fact, you come to Mariano, you get it as it is. She's a drama queen. However, Alicia points out that, hey, Boston Rob is acting like he's the king of the camp and who designated him this position? Somebody has to say something. They can't just do that. Who made Rob the master of this camp and Amber his little in-pocket girl? Who, who, when did that happen? While we hear from every single member of the Shapara tribe in the opening scene on the beach, Amber is almost invisible until halfway through the episode when Boston Rob offers her an alliance. And even though she smartly agrees, we don't hear from her about why she agrees. We just hear from him about it. What do you think? You wanna make an alliance? <laughs> Cover our own asses? I don't know if I can take you seriously or not. I'm being 100% serious. Do you want to? Yeah. Her one and only confessional this episode is when they finally receive tree mail and she is hoping that at the challenge, there's an opportunity to win some fire because so far, huh, they have had no success making any. It seems to be an immunity challenge, but we're hoping within an immunity challenge, we can win some fire because our tribe is, uh, we're hurting pretty bad. Right after she agrees, we hear from him about why he offered and let's say he seems lovesick already. Now this seems similar to what he did with Sarah Jones and Marquesas, except she is a totally different personality from Amber. In that season, I would say he's lusting. Here, it's definitely something more. Amber and I have an alliance for obvious reasons. She's beautiful, obviously. Any idiot can see that. I trust her, I don't think she's gonna screw me. They finally receive tree mail. When Boston Rob goes to read it, Sue says she won't come over and instead just wants him to speak up. Like, read your note, but I'm all the way over here. I'm not coming over for it. When he reads it out loud, he emphasizes a certain word to her in a hint, hint fashion. So you wanna come over? Just speak up. Why start now? Speak up. In a show of unity, unity. Your flag shows tribal pride. At that immunity challenge, they win. And as Mogo Mogo crosses the finish line in second place, Richard Hatch is naked, and you can hear Boston Rob telling him to put his junk away.
back at camp boston rob seems impressed that his self-labeled tribe of misfits won to be fair in marquesas his tribe was always losing so this is new territory for him he says that they are the underdogs and once again is crafting a narrative that you should be rooting for him we're the biggest bunch of misfit survivors you can put together from seven seasons we go out there and win it we are the ultimate underdog and that's it for the premiere episode however there is also a bonus scene that isn't shown until the recap episode this season but it is so good i have to mention it here saboga is going to tribal council so shapara does a mock tribal council themselves where they predict who will be going home while also also having fun imitating the other players. Amber does a hilarious Tina Wesson. Alicia is Jerry Manthe. Big Tom is Rupert. Sue is Jenna Lewis. Rob Sestrino plays Jeff Probst. And Boston Rob is Ethan Zahn. How's my hair, Jeff? <laughs> I think it is time to vote. Jenna, I'm sorry to have to vote for you. It's just a game. Sorry, babe. While this isn't part of the official story, it does reinforce what we will see later. But for now, let's just enjoy it as the joke that it is. Lord, please forgive me for my language that I am about to use right now. But Miss Jerry Manthe, I am voting for you. My vote is for Jerry. And uh, that's it. We don't know anything about her life since she played last time or if she plans on utilizing any different strategies this time, nothing. Things we heard from other players in this premiere, nothing from her. As of now, it seems like she will not be an important part of the season and she may not even last very long. This premiere was a packed one for Boston Rob. He dominates the screen time at Shapara and is in an obvious narrator position. He takes the spotlight and he's not letting it go. Now this is similar to Marquesas where once he felt confident, he narrated every episode he was in. So this isn't new to him. However, he is on a tribe that seems to be having fun winning challenges, and he's falling for the cute girl in the tribe. This is a much better starting position than what he was in previously. He wants to be the big man on campus and is ready to cut down everyone else in the eyes of, well, us, the audience. He is a master of confessionals where he always does them in a conversational way that draws us in. It makes us feel like we are part of whatever he is talking about. It is truly unique, and the closest comparison up until this point in Survivor history is probably Rob Sesternino. So, let's see how this all pans out. It is now episode two and neither tribe has any fire, not even Saboga, who went to tribal council, which means that they can't boil the parasite filled water from their well, and therefore, they're dehydrated. However, it is raining now in Panama, and this causes a celebration by Shapara as they sing and dance. We got some water, we got some water, we got some water. Have you ever seen the rain? All down, all down. Each tribe is then given a box and what's inside? They don't have any idea. What they do know is that there are three locks on it and if it is anything like the treasure chest in Pearl Islands, it probably has food. Boston Rob says, screw it, let's just bust it open, why not? But no one else agrees with him. He then says that they are all scared of Jeff Probst who he roasts openly on the show. However, if any of his tribe were to look at what he is trying to do more closely, they would see a guy who is willing to do anything, including breaking the rules. You guys want to open it? When we first got that box, my first inclination was forget about the note. We're starving over here. We just smash it open. Everybody else is saying, oh no, we don't want to do that. We we might upset pretty boy probes or something. At the reward challenge, Saboga wins some lousy blankets, but it is pointless as Jeff gives every tribe a pot and flint instead so they can all make fire. Plus the first key to that box. Back at camp, the feud with Alicia continues as Boston Rob and her fight about how to make the fire in front of everyone. He says that she has a big mouth and she needs to learn how to shut it. Now, while he is saying this to us and therefore it is technically private, thoughts like those will subconsciously affect how you treat someone. I came back here and I knew exactly how to build a fire and get it started. But of course, Boston, Rob and Big Tom, these guys are so macho. Alicia's just talking a little bit too much. She walks around giving orders constantly. It's her nature. She got a big mouth. She needs to learn to shut it. Shapiro wins immunity and Boston Rob is ecstatic. <laughs> We move on episode three where each tribe is tasked with building the best shelter they can in 24 hours. 
Since Boston Rob's day job is being a construction worker, he says how this is the perfect challenge for him. I'm in construction. I love to build things if I have tools. And I was pumped. I was like, yeah, this is for me. This is my challenge. We're winning this. Amber elects to sit out, but Boston Rob is leading the project. And while he does, she checks him out out and finally tells us her thoughts on her alliance with him but mostly about how she just really has the hots for him and i'll admit when i saw him building that shelter he was pretty hot building that shelter <laughs> He's good at doing what he does. It's getting much easier and easier to flirt with Boston Rob. While Boston Rob and Big Tom are like two peas in a pod working together, building the shelter, and they've kind of been like that all season so far anyways, Sester Nino and Alicia are designated to do the not as important work, such as making a rock garden. Boston Rob once again explains to us exactly what he thinks of Alicia. Her vision is about as deep as, yeah, that's about how deep it is. Right after that, he starts his rampage that we saw hints of in the bonus scene, but really saw when he dissed probes where he will tear down every single male this season to make them appear not as great as we might think they are, but definitely less than what he is. Here he says that Sesternino is lazy. Sesternino, I think, is useless all around. Seems like he's on a never ending coffee break. Thanks to the efforts of Boston Rob and Big Tom, they win the reward challenge pretty handily and get an awesome crate full of stuff. <laughs> Now, do you remember earlier when we saw Amber getting hot and heavy for Rob? Well, that is enhanced when they pop open the reward box and get some alcohol. And she openly admits to wanting to kiss him in front of everyone, which undoubtedly is telling the rest of the tribe just how close they are. If you're gonna kiss me, kiss me now because I'm not kissing you with nasty breath later on. Now you got wine breath. Whoa. At the immunity challenge, the Shapara and Saboga tribes are surprised when Jenna Maraska quits due to her mom's health getting worse and worse. Due to someone who's very ill at home right now, that's getting worse. I need to pull myself out of the game. A few people then express their opinions on quitting, including some who don't agree with Jenna's decision at all. And Amber is actually the first one to console Jenna and offer her a hug. I feel really bad for her. Can I give her a hug? Of course. Thank you. No, no, no. As it turns out, her mother passes away not too long after she arrives home, so she definitely made the right decision here. Moving on to episode four, everyone has noticed how close Boston Rob and Amber have become, and Sester Nino makes it plain as day what he expects, but hearing these things from multiple players in the tribe just puts a target on Rob's back. They're so warm. Right? <sighs> Rob and Amber were laying on the thing, kind of getting a romantic move. Boston Rob and Amber are gonna do it. I don't know when, but they're gonna do it. At the reward challenge, the players really get to interact with each other by playing an elaborate matching game. When Boston Rob gets to go for the first time, he calls Ethan a pretty boy. That is male number three now that he has cut down this season. Pretty boy. Who's pretty boy? Wow, he looked right at me. Must be Zon. Ethan. You got a rock in there? I think you got a couple up here, don't you? Oh, snap. Later on, he calls Richard Hatch Dickey in reference to how Hatch is almost constantly naked this season. That is male number four now that he has made a dig at. Dickey, ah. give me a driftwood. I knew I lifted it too high. <laughs> They do win the reward challenge and back at camp, Big Tom is wearing their new toilet around his head, being his usual goofy self, and it's pretty funny. Boston Rob makes another remark to cut down what is now male number five. Big Tom put the toilet over his head. I'm willing to bet it's not the first time Big Tom's had his head in the toilet. Using the supplies they just won, Boston Rob bathes Amber and says how this is risky because it could show others how close they have gotten, but I think at this point this ship has clearly sailed. We're not so sure if it's a good idea if we bathe each other because the uh, tribe might get the wrong idea. However, soap and scrubs with the women. Now they have the clue for the final key to the box. As Boston Rob looks for it and struggles, Sester Nino tries a different approach. It isn't dumb, but Boston Rob paints him as being really dumb for even trying something different, and the show does this as well. Now look over, the kid's building a friggin' sandcastle on the beach. It looks like he's 12 years old, you know, he got his shovel there and he's just putting it together. However, not long after that, Boston Rob finds the last key and is the hero as the box that they open contains rice and whiskey inside of it. 
I got it. I got it! At the immunity challenge, for the first time all season, Shapiro loses and finally needs to cut one of their own. Back at camp, Amber approaches Big Tom with an idea. She says, hey, why don't we vote out Rob Sestianino as she is sure that they can get Boston Rob in on the plan and have the numbers. She says that she knows Boston Rob will be on board with this plan and that's really great for him. He's not being targeted. This is what I think. You and me, Boston Rob will be on our side. Out. We then see what is very interesting in the storytelling, especially for us watching. At first glance, it seems like Boston Rob and Sestrino are creating an alliance right before Tribal Council. However, upon closer inspection, it is clear that actually this conversation had to have taken place sometime in episode two, as the facial hair now here in episode four is way longer, but here in this scene, it's way shorter than it was in the scene before and after this one. So why is the story showing us this way later? It seemingly makes Boston Rob look mean and Sester Nino look stupid since he is about to be voted out. As long as I have your, your assurance on this, then I'm good. Want to shake on it? At Tribal Council, Jeff asks Amber what she can contribute to the tribe that she takes from her regular life, and she says that she is really good at calming people down and keeping people from getting into fights, in particular, Alicia and Boston Rob. I think we have a few on our tribe who tend to lose their temper pretty quickly or throw fits, and I think I'm very good at calming people down and talking some sense into them. Through some more talk at Tribal, Probes finds out about the romantic duo of Rob and Amber. Amber says that, hey, she's just young and having fun and totally plays it down. Her and Boston Rob both act like it's nothing and say that the game is more important, which seems to be working as no one is connecting the dots that this is also part of the game. I'm out here to play the game of Survivor. I'm not out here to play a dating game. Amber's plan works and they do end up voting out Rob Sesternino unanimously. Rob, the trap is broken. It is now episode five and at the next reward challenge, there are big stakes. The losing tribe will be dissolved and drafted into the two remaining tribes. Saboga loses and therefore Mogo Mogo gets Ethan Zahn and Jerry Manthe, while Shapara gets Rupert and Jenna Lewis. Rupert. Rupert, no longer a member of Saboga, you are now a member of Shapira. <laughs> We then see the immunity challenge where it is the Boston Rob show through and through. First off, he seemingly hurts Ethan Zahn on the battle bridge. Come on, man. First one to hit the water's out. Yeah. Boston Rob hit the water first. Ethan took a big header on the side of the pool. Then he takes on Colby Donaldson and wins. Come on, Rob! Colby hits the water first, Boston Rob moves on. And then in a much less dramatic fashion, he beats Kathy Vavrick O'Brien. Kathy hits the water, let him go. And after crushing three fan favorites back to back to back, his tribe gives up and just lets him do all the work. And sure enough, it works as he almost single-handedly wins them immunity. Boston Rob is out of control. I'm jumping off so Rob can go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What do you want me to do? Rob has the winning flag. Shapira wins immunity. Back at camp, he paints himself as this scrappy underdog who just pulled out a win over the big dogs. Mind you, Shapira has been dominating all season, but Boston Rob is here to craft a narrative where he is that hero. Felt real good to be able to propel my team for the win. And I may not be as strong as some of them, but I guarantee I'm tougher than every single one of them. Oh, and don't worry, he still takes the time, and the show takes the time, to tear down Colby. Colby? Yeah. He's not as tough as you think, ladies. We move on to episode six, where Rupert is doing his usual thing of fishing and providing for the tribe. Despite this great service he is doing for everyone, Rob proceeds to cut him down when talking to Tom. Rupert's catching fish. I'm happy. He can continue to feed me until it's time for him to go. And that time will be determined by me. Boston Rob's ego is really getting bigger and bigger by the episode. And at this point, there's only one male he hasn't cut down and that is Lex. And it's probably because he really hasn't had a chance to do that yet. Later on in the episode, we learn that Sue is emotionally distraught, and that is because at the last immunity challenge, Richard Hatch got naked and purposely ran into her with his uh, 
package. Rob isn't entirely sure what to think about this as he has a few theories about why Sue is emotionally distraught. It could be that she really is emotionally distressed. It could be that she wants money in a lawsuit or this could be a game move for her. Sue is either A, looking to cash in on a huge payday or Sue is really emotionally distraught by the whole thing or Sue's using this as some kind of a leverage to play the game of survival. He says he can't really know for sure since he isn't her, but it definitely seems like he thinks this is a game move, which is actually more representative of how he frames everything in his own head. Amber thinks that because they are on Survivor, Sue has a lot of time to sit and think about this, and that uh, all that time has just amplified how bad the event was for her. I think it's just gotten worse and worse in her head as it's gone along. I think maybe at first she was thinking, Oh, you know, I can get him for this, but now it's really starting to bother me. Later on, we see Amber roping Rupert and Jenna into a conversation with herself and Rob, where they all four say, yes, let's make an alliance. But how Amber and Rob frame this alliance is as if her and him are on the bottom of Shapara and they need to join with Rupert and Jenna, who just came over and probably feel like they're on the bottom as well. It is brilliant manipulation and everyone agrees to this alliance. Rob and I came up with the idea to approach Rupert and Jenna, tell them that, you know, we think we're on the outs, we think we're in trouble, we'll save you if you save us. So I got alliances with everybody now, except Sue and Alicia. At the reward challenge, it turns out it wasn't just a game move as Sue does blow up on Jeff Probst and quits the game. I was violated, humiliated, dehumanized, and totally spent, Jeff. It wasn't sort of Jeff. That night back at camp, the rest of Shapara makes a pact to be the final six. And with that, Rob and Amber have an onion alliance intact. As of now, it is up to them how their outer layers are defined. But basically it is Big Tom and Alicia on the most outer layer, Rupert and Jenna in the middle, and they are the core, meaning Rob and Amber are the core of that onion. The next morning, the Shapira tribe receives tree mail that tells them that there will be no immunity challenge since Sue quit, so they hold a not so serious moment of silence. Okay. Mm. Oh. Let's have a moment yeah, we don't have any whiskey. Let's have some rice. <laughs> Let's have some rice. Amber then tells us how Shapara is the best when it comes to being happy and making light out of anything. She says how a good portion of Survivor is simply maintaining good spirits, which is absolutely true for the pre-merge. You can never count out Shapira for making a sad moment into a happy moment. We're the happy tribe, and somehow we always find a way to laugh about it. Moving on to episode 7, where Shapira has their amazing winning streak on the line. Reward and immunity are up for grabs, and as they row to the beach, they have fallen behind. Boston Rob rushes into the woods after Ethan does, and who comes out first? And it isn't even close as he catches them up and helps them pass Mogo Mogo, securing reward and immunity. Shapira wins reward and immunity. Immunity. Since they won, Shapira gets to bring one Mogo Mogo with them on the expensive yacht reward. They pick Kathy, and when they do so, they make sure she feels welcomed and loved by them all. We got a new girl. Her name is Kat. We got a new girl. Her name is Kat. The Shapiro crowd, you know what they've got that we don't have is they're having fun. They're enjoying the game. On that yacht, there are food, drinks, and golf. When being handed some drivers, Rob says how he was on the state championship team in high school, and this is immediately followed by him goofing and smiling. I was on the state championship golf team in my high school. <laughs> Drive. Oh. <laughs> oh no! Oh my God. Just every, every Just time. Trouble. Every time. Yeah. Episode 8 brings with it a reward challenge that sees castaways from each tribe facing off one on one on a rolling log. Whoever falls in the water first loses. Rob faces off against Ethan and. Ethan versus Boston Rob. He then faces off against Lex, the only male who he has yet to trash in some way or beat in some way, shape, or form, and... Lex versus Boston Rob. Boston Rob working it. Lex reacting. Lex staying on.
Amber dominates both times she does this and actually secures the victory for her tribe. Amber looking very confident. Run, 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 run. They're up and going. Jerry first in. Amber scores for Shapira. Now, 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 now. That night at camp, Rupert says he has walked up on Rob and Amber multiple times where they look extremely guilty. We then hear from Amber about how at first she was just stringing Rob along, but now she has really grown some feelings for him. Definitely at first I was stringing him along. The flirting was a huge strategy in the beginning, um, but then I got caught up in it and feelings. Rob says she is perfect and compliments her and then for the first time on camera. <laughs> Later on, Rupert is fishing once again, but now he has a Hawaiian sling that they got from their last reward. Rob trashes on him to us and once again does it with Big Tom by making fun of his obsession with catching fish and the way he talks. It comes across as mean-spirited and wholly unnecessary since Rupert is super nice and is always providing for his tribe. Rupert's all excited about having the Hawaiian sling. You know, it's his baby. Now he can catch a fish and show how much he's worth to the tribe. This guy talks baby talk. What is that? You ever notice that? My name uh, is Rupert. I'm a big and strong fisherman in the Pearl Island. Rob then paints us a picture that what Rupert does for Shapira is easy. Any idiot with this sling can catch fish because as he says, the sling does all the work so anyone can just catch fish like Rupert. This is all once again mean-spirited and has Rupert saying he doesn't like Rob's cocky attitude. I know just as well as anybody else. It's like basically going to the pet store and grabbing one of the goldfish containers and just picking out which fish you want. Boston style. Other times I see kind of an arrogant pain in the ass. At the immunity challenge, Boston Rob beats Jerry and once again, Shapira is safe. Wide to the right, that's it. Shapira wins immunity. Mogo Mogo, heading to Tribal Council. The next episode, episode 9, is a recap, which does not affect the overall story, so we move on to episode 10, where... Reach in and pick a buff. You're now a member of Shapira. Have a spot on the red map. Wow. They are swapping tribes this late in the game for the first time. A bit crazy, and what is even crazier is that literally everyone just swaps to the other tribe. So nothing has really changed at all except for Amber, who is the only one to stay on her original tribe, but now with everyone else from the other tribe. It's kind of confusing, but also shocking. And therefore, she is in a terrible situation for her game, and ultimately, this could hurt Rob's game as well. Amber is the only one to change tribes. As the tribes go to part ways, multiple members of the old Shapira tribe come back and hug Amper. They clearly feel a very close connection with her, especially Rob, who is now separated from her for the first time. <laughs> this couple is in a very fragile part of their relationship, and with them being separated, this could spell doom for them, as now Amber is in a precarious situation that if she can't get out of, she won't even make the jury and will simply disappear once her torch is snuffed. They both have some real work to do. Back at camp, Rob is very emotional over being split up from his girlfriend. While Amber feels the same, he seems a lot more upset than she does when we cut between the camps. Amber tells us that this situation she is in is an interesting one, but ultimately feels like she got screwed when all she wanted was just to go to wherever Rob went. When Jeff held up the new pot full of buffs and we're all picking them out one by one, really the main thought that was going through my head was, let me just pull the same color that Rob pulls. Now that she is on a tribe full of former Moga Mogos, it feels do or die for her. Either way, it is clear that she means a lot to him and he means a lot to her. I care about her. It kills me to have her over there by herself. I don't really care that the other team has our camp now. As much as we're crying about it over here, it doesn't matter. What aggravates me is they got my girl over there. Shapira wins immunity and this puts Amber in an incredibly tough spot. On the way from leaving the challenge, he cuts a deal with Lex to sway him to save Amber, where he specifically says, you take care of her, I'll take care of you. If you can, if you can. If you can, if you can. 
back at camp, there is no secret about him and Amber, and he doesn't care, as he puts an A right on his arm to show how much he misses her. I put an A on my arm for Amber. Hopefully she makes it to the next challenge. At the Shapira camp, Amber talks to Kathy and begins by pitching they vote out Jerry instead and even gets on her hands and knees to do so. I'm voting for Jerry. That's my desperate attempt. Can I get down on my knees and beg? Please, Kathy, keep me in the game. However, she then has a serious discussion with Kathy where she wheels and deals and makes some promises about what will happen in the post merge game if they keep her, basically promising you will have more power if you keep me. She also finds out from Kathy that when they do merge, Lex and Big Tom have a secret alliance, and Big Tom is planning on flipping to Lex to do whatever Lex wants. What well, doesn't he think that Big Tom will be on his side in the end? He does think Big Tom will be on his side. Okay. Yeah. After much deliberation between Kathy, Sheehan, and Lex at Tribal Council, they all do help Amber vote out Jerry, and she is saved. Jerry, the tribe has spoken. Episode 11 starts with Boston Rob being an absolute mess. We hear from Big Tom that this reminds him of having to wean a calf from its mama on his farm. It may take a few days, but eventually it will happen. Rob is just so lovesick. I've never seen Rob all screwed up like this. And it'll take about three days to get a calf weaned from its mother. A human's about to say. After that, a strange deal is made. Boston Rob is trying to cover all of his bases at this point, and he actually makes a deal with Alicia, who he doesn't like and has been feuding with for pretty much the entire season. They agree to not write each other's names down at Tribal, and this is a big promise to make, as they are essentially making a final two deal. We can have like a little silent alliance yeah. going. I will, I will never write your name down. All right. I will I never promise you. write your name I down. I will never write your name down. That's it. At the reward challenge, when her old tribe sees that she is still in the game, they are genuinely excited. She really is loved by them all. Rupert wins the individual reward challenge and brings along his close ally, Jenna Lewis, which makes sense, but he also picks Amber as well, since he feels bad she has been with the old Mogo Mogo for one whole day. They do end up having fun on the reward, and Amber gets to truly embrace being a girly girl. I'm in heaven with two goddesses. <laughs> While on that same reward challenge though, Jenna and Rupert are talking a lot about what to expect, their alliances, stuff like that, basically about how to get to the end of the game. And Amber reminds us that she has made a deal with Kathy and Lex that they could go to the end with, but she knows she can't tell Rupert and Jenna that, who think they are also going to the end with her and Rob, which is uh, all they're talking about on the reward anyways. I was a little nervous because I made a deal with Lex and Kathy that they could come to the end with me, Big Tom, and Rob. I couldn't tell Rupert and Jenna that. Sometimes it's better just to know when to say nothing. And finally, on day 26, Jeff Probst finally says, This time the box. Yeah! It is the merge color. Back at camp, Amber helps come up with the new tribe name, and someone says it sounds a lot like a dance, so they all dance. How about Jabogamogo? Jabogamogo. Sounds like a dance. That's Rob is talking with Lex, and while he does, it is intercut with a mafia-like confessional to us. This is the cold-blooded killer we saw in Marquesas. He basically tells Lex to his face that I won't backstab you, as he is telling us in a confessional that Lex is stupid for ever believing Rob in the first place. He isn't going to save you, Lex. It is truly an iconic moment, as we had no reason to believe that Rob was lying until right now. As soon as we married. Lex comes running over to me. Rob, make me feel comfortable. Tell me that I'm safe. But yeah, I certainly won't be happy about that. I won't stick a knife in the bag now. I'm gonna do that. Well, I'm making the deal save Amber and I'm gonna help you later on? You guys didn't really believe that, did you? Come on. Rob then talks to Amber about cutting Lex, and on paper, this is the best move for their game, as Lex really does pose the largest threat to their Shapara 6 alliance, which is on course to hold strong until the end. Amber says, why not Jenna and Rupert first? She is worried if they vote out Lex, all eyes will be on her and Rob. Because as soon as Lex is gone, 
Big Tom doesn't have a leg to stand on. While she is right, Rob's gameplay is all about eliminating anyone who resembles any threat to him as soon as possible, and she is worried about breaking deals. But at this point, they have deals with pretty much everyone in the game except maybe she and. The smart move is to cut someone from Lex's alliance of three instead of from their foursome of Rupert, Tom, Jenna, and Alicia. Betraying the Shapara six this early would spell doom, and despite getting themselves into a hole with all these deals, those same deals will ultimately carry them until the others realize that maybe their deal isn't the real one that Robin Amber will be honest and true to. I was like so happy when I seen you mad. I was so happy. At the immunity challenge, for the first time in Survivor history, a man and a woman can win and will win individual immunity. Boss and Rob and Kathy both do just that. He's got it! Boss and Rob comes from behind! Wins the immunity! Nice effort. Safe at the vote tonight. What happens next is one of the most iconic moments in all of Survivor, and you can really feel the weight and importance of this as the conversation is happening. You see, all season Lex has said countless times about how friendships don't matter this time. It is all business. He even uses this reasoning to cut his friend and former Alliance member from Africa in Ethan when talking to him. I think that at this point, it's just, it's better for my game if we vote you out tonight. But. It has nothing to do with friendship, this, this is business. He tells Ethan before Tribal, where he votes him out, that he will be voting him out next, and that, hey, it's not personal, I have to do this. Ethan doesn't like this and tries to save himself, but overall, he handles it like a champ. Lex, uh, as much as you say you want it, this is business, it's not. It's not easy for me to tell you this, because I know how disappointing this is. So when we get to this conversation between Boss and Rob and Lex, it is almost the same exact thing, except now Lex is in the Ethan position and Rob is in the Lex position. Rob is trying to do what he thinks will please Lex by telling him before Tribal that he won't be stabbing him in the back, instead he'll be stabbing him in the front. As the Shapara Six are sticking together and will be voting him out next, Lex takes this incredibly hard and complains that he screwed up his game for Rob, that what he did for Rob was not even a game move, but just a friend helping a friend. Rob is correct when he says that if what Lex is saying is true, that this is really just a friend helping a friend, then he shouldn't be taking this so hard. I can't even believe what I'm hearing. Let me tell you something right now. That was not a game or strategy decision. It wasn't a strategy decision. It was, you have a, it nothing was, to it be was angry a, about. And I did that just because you're my friend. It had, you would have for and you would have tried I, to base I completely... My no. own game. But obviously, as we saw before, it is a game move that Lex intended to exploit Rob for. He thought saving Amber would get him, Kathy, Big Tom, Rob, and Amber to the final five since Amber promised him and Kathy that. He says he can't even believe what he's hearing right now after he did Rob the special friend favor. You're asking me to screw everybody else now. It's you got, you got more allegiance to them than you got to me. I mean, After I asking made, me for a special friend agreement. Favor. This is a lose-lose situation for Rob. If he blindsides Lex by voting him out, Lex will be an angry juror. If he blindsides him by voting out Kathy or Sheehan, Lex will rampage at camp. By the way, the way we know that this is exactly what will happen is because the same exact thing happened in Africa and basically is repeating itself here. If he holds true to Lex, he will screw over Tom, Alicia, Rupert, and Jenna, and that is four jurors. He is in a lose-lose situation no matter what, and it came at the cost of keeping Amber, who is just as much a part of this as Rob, except her hands are staying clean. She made the same deal, but no one's getting mad at her. Like what we are seeing here with Lex and Kathy getting mad at Rob. It doesn't help that the conversation ends on a bad note with Rob getting mad at Lex. And you want to put our friendship on the line, I'll put our friendship on the line over this. The word I gave you was that if I can take care of you, I will. I'm sorry, I cannot. I, I would. And Lex looked hey, at me and said. I'm sorry you feel that way. I really truly am. I'm really sorry that you feel that way. Kathy is mortified and deeply hurt by all this. She is a friend of Rob. They met on the same season, and now it is affecting her personally. If Lex got voted out tonight and Boss from Rob got away with it, uh uh. I am not doing that. At Tribal Council, it is clear by the way that Rob is talking that this is simply a game move and he is hurt by the idea that Lex and Kathy are taking this personally. It helps show that he isn't a monster, he's just the one actually following through this idea that this is all just a game. If I'm your friend, I'm your friend. And after this is over, you don't want to be my friend. Friendship is lasting. When he goes to vote, you can see that he still doesn't want to do it and he does care about Lex. Hey buddy, sorry about the vote. Thanks for keeping Amber around. 
I hope we can get over this mess. However, Lex is voted out. Lex, Travis spoke. It's time for you to go. It seems like at this point, the plan is just to steamroll Mogamogo until there's only the Shapara tribe left, which in that case, we eliminate in the order of the Onion Alliance. Rob and Amber are sitting pretty if the others don't connect the dots and realize that they need to go. Episode 12 begins with a conversation with Kathy that confirms what Lex had said to Rob previously. Lex thought that once the merge hit, that him and Big Tom would just rejoin forces to get to the end. It really isn't a big deal on paper, but to Rob, he frames this to us as a betrayal of his trust. But more importantly, something he can use against Big Tom later. Because he had some, you know, he had an arrangement with Tom, and he felt that for some reason you guys had it just by kind of osmosis. Big Tom, you got caught and your best buddy sold you out. After a war challenge, everyone gets to see a slice of video from home, and Rob gets a weird one from his brother. However, he does reveal that family is super important to him. My brother's always been there for me, my whole family, my whole life, always, and first and foremost in my life, and I always will be. And Amber gets really emotional when she sees hers. Hi, Amber. Say hi, Amber. Say we miss you. <laughs> Rob wins reward and immunity and knows that when he does so, Jeff jokes that no one wants to see the whole tape of Rob's brother. Boom, come up, talk to Rob. Wins immunity and a video of his brother that I'm not sure anybody wants to yeah. see. However, Rob wants to trade his tape from home so that everyone can instead get their letters. Jeff takes him up on this offer and it immediately brings him a lot of goodwill. Is there any way if I forego seeing the video, everybody could get their letter? <sighs> I can make that trade. <laughs> oh, yeah. Back at camp, Rob admits, yeah, it is a strategic move, but he has a heart and he traded the tape to make everyone feel good because you can clearly tell he is still shaken up about the fallout with Lex, but he has not taken his eye off the prize. He wants that million dollars. I don't remember the last time I was emotional about anything ever for me. My family is the most important thing in the world. We then hear from both Shan and Kathy who say that, yeah, this is nice that he did this for them, but they both know that this is more strategic than anything else. You know, probably down deep in his heart, he wanted us all to have the letters, but he higher on the list was the fact that it might counterbalance any of that anguish and anger that was exposed yesterday. Later on in the episode, Kathy wants Amber, Rob, and Jenna Lewis out of power. These are the three she thinks are running the show. So Kathy and Shan work on flipping people like Big Tom and Rupert, albeit with little success. This really shows how strong the bonds are that Amber and Rob have built with the Shapara Six. No one is going to break them apart because they just trust Rob and Amber that much. I think we got some last minute scrambling going on in Panama today. Kathy and Shan are working it. They'll probably go after Amber or Jenna. At Tribal Council, when Rob votes, he makes a snide remark about Kathy, which is really kicking someone when they are down. And then when walking back to sit down, Lex gives him a look and this is gonna be happening pretty much at every tribal. Kathy, I don't discredit you for trying, but you didn't honestly think I was gonna let you win. However, Kathy is voted out. Kathy, the tribe has spoken. Episode 13 starts and there are only seven players remaining, with one being a former Mogo Mogo in Xi'an and she is annoyed beyond belief. She paints the former Shapara tribe as smug and horrible people. The smug, horrible Shapara superior tribe pagonging all of us Mogo Mogo members. They then get tree mail, which contains a massive mask. Big Tom puts it on over his face and tries to make others laugh. And for some reason, we see Rob call him a name. Not only is it clear that what Rob thinks about Tom has turned a corner, but the show making sure to show us this means that his attitude towards Tom is going to be important. <laughs> Dumbass. At the reward challenge, this is an interesting one as everyone is given a quiz to fill out. Survivor is going to take their answers and the castaways are to guess which answers were the most popular amongst their tribe mates. One of those questions is who would you trust with your life and what is the right answer? Who would you trust with your life? Everybody reveal. The group thought Rob. When they are all asked who uses sex appeal in the game, Amber is the uh, well, she's the unanimous choice. Who uses sex appeal 
as a weapon. Everybody says Amber, including Amber. <laughs> when the question of who is the most honest comes up, Rupert is the right answer. However, Rob is smart and answers himself. This is a pretty subtle move to tell everyone that, hey, you're an honest guy and you think you're honest too. After all, they just said they do trust you. Who did the group think was the most honest? Reveal. Amber and Rupert say Rupert, Rob said himself. Rupert wins the reward challenge and back at camp, Alicia is upset because she was voted as least deserving to be an all-star tied with Sheehan. And as someone who thinks they are smarter than they really are, not monikers that anyone really wants. Though Sheehan, who was also voted as least deserving all-star, just shrugs us off and goes, yeah, whatever. However, Rob's attitude about Alicia has not changed and he makes this known to us. Since my own tribe mates think I don't deserve to be here, Rob, you're going first. Her ego took a blow. But you know, people say things for a reason. So maybe she needs to take a look at herself. Amber observes that this behavior that Alicia is having by being annoyed at everyone for thinking these things will cause her to be voted out of the game because no one wants to live with someone who's just mad and annoyed at you all the time. She's just being a big baby about it. People are observing it. People are getting annoyed with it. People will vote you out sooner because they don't want to live with it. At the reward, Rupert gets to give out food to everyone on the tribe, ranging from a nice steak dinner to a bowl of rice. Unfortunately, in doing so, he reveals the Alliance of Four and essentially the entire Onion Alliance. Heck, he even gives Rob the second best meal available. But this is not all bad news as Boston Rob tells us that this means that Rupert must trust Rob and Amber to be doing this. Basically, Rupert exposed our Alliance of Four. He's kind of sticking it in their face which kind of shows me that he does trust myself and Amber to a degree. The next morning, some of the tribe are washing their clothes, so of course Rob and Amber do an impromptu dance. Why not? Sheehan then gets back to work. Her target? Boston Rob. She tries to sway Rupert, but despite knowing his position in the game, Rupert seems unwilling to make a move against Rob. Oh my god. If gosh, I were I anyone here, I I've already talked to Jenna about that. Of but she has. they're telling me they'll take me to the final four too, but I know I'll be fourth. And that's how I win immunity. Rob then talks to Big Tom and paints a picture that Rupert is not to be trusted. After all, Let's remember that Rob was voted as the most trustworthy person in the tribe. He actively manipulates what Tom thinks about Rupert by acting as if the second best meal he received was some sort of cover for Rupert's secret intentions, which Rupert doesn't have, and Rob knows this. I know what people think around the camp. I know, right. even though Rupert pretends he's all nice. Well, last night he gave me a hamburger. I could read beyond that. Sheehan has one immunity, which undoubtedly is going to cause drama, as one of the Shapira Six now has to be voted out. And she talks to Amber about possibly making a move on someone like Boston Rob. I don't know why she thinks Amber would be willing to cut Boston Rob, but that's how good of positions they find themselves in. And Amber tells Sheehan that she trusts Rob and she knows that if she lies to Rob, he will trust what she says. A little bit too much information just be handing out, but Sheehan then has a ding, ding, ding moment. Amber is running the show behind the scenes and Rob is the errand boy. Amber is actually the real brains of the operation. Her and Rob are making all these decisions together, but Rob is the one who has to be the bad guy and doing all of the dirty work. Yeah, the deal maker. Such a strategist. Look at her down there. Look at the strategizing going on right now. She's so sweet. You hate to hate her because she's so lovely and she's got those beautiful green eyes. But you know what? She's one of the shrewdest players out here. We then cut to Boston Rob reading his letter from home out loud to Amber, where he says if he didn't trust her so much, he would never be reading this to her. The story and edit is confirming exactly what Sheehan has said. Plot twist. Amber's in charge. Remember the key to the game is loose lips sink ships. What? Honestly, like if I didn't trust you 100%, I would never let you read this, but you know. We then hear from Rob about where he currently stands with Amber. He thinks the relationship is real, but he doesn't truly know. He could just be the biggest sucker in Survivor history. I think it's genuine what's going on. I could be the biggest sucker in history, and if so, hey, she had me fooled. At Tribal Council, when Rob goes to vote, he breaks his promise to Alicia and votes for her while also making a mean comment about her as well. Au revoir. Adios. Arrivederci. Sayonara. As we say in Boston, see you later. The first part of the Onion Alliance is removed as Alicia is voted out. Alicia, the tribe has spoken. 
episode 14 begins with the family visit, which predictably draws a large emotional response from Amber when she sees her mom. Amber, here's your mom, Cheryl. Amber, get on that mat. Big Tom wins the reward and picks Rob to go with him, showing just how close he is to him. This is further emphasized by when on that same reward, Big Tom tells his son that the key to getting him to the final two is Rob taking him there. Rob taking him there over Amber. The key to this thing is Rob keeping him alive. If Rob will hang in there with me, he will, dude. I think me and Rob might get first and second. That's what we said we was going to do. On that reward, while Tom is saying that to his son, Rob then crafts a new narrative to his brother about what he did to Lex, where no longer is it that he had to vote out a friend due to a deal he made to save Amber, and it's all just a game move. But instead, he made a deal with a sucker who got snaked for even trusting Rob. Lex, do me a favor. Keep the girl. Mm -hmm. I'll help you out on the reverse side. Is that right? So he, the dumbass actually kept her, and then I snaked him. <laughs> Tom and Rob get to bring their family members back to camp with them for a little bit where we see Tom and his son Bo work very hard and even try some fishing, which is contrasted with Rob and his brother who just sit around and do nothing. Rob and his brother want to help us get the wood. Thank you, get Dilly Squad. While fishing, Bo, Tom's son, loses one of these spearheads, but don't worry, they have multiple. Rob then proceeds to call them both the name, which is a bit surprising since Tom is the reason he got reward and they had been so close all season, but clearly finding out that information about Tom from Kathy and Lex has completely turned around his mind on him, and uh, he has to paint every male of the season as less than himself. You did it! <laughs> Bo's a bigger dumbass than his dad. I mean, Big Tom's pretty dumb, but Bo is just, he's out there too. But at Tribal, when voting, Shan labels Amber the mastermind, giving her the credit and foreshadowing future events to the audience. This vote is for you out of respect. You are the mastermind right now. So from one she devil to another, this is the vote I'm casting tonight. She Ann is voted out and the steamrolling of Mogo Mogo is complete. Shan, tribe spoken. Like Episode 15 begins and the painting of Tom as dumb and annoying continues as Boss and Rob is simply tired of him at this point. But it, you gotta get on it, but they invited me to come down. And I went down to eat with him, but I didn't play. Take a little on the side. Yeah. He makes these unintelligible noises. Nobody understands what he's saying. Trouble is a brewing though. While Rupert and Jenna Lewis think they are alone, they talk to each other privately and plot to vote out Rob next if he doesn't have immunity. Rob then catches them in the act of talking about this, which can be blamed on Jenna Lewis for not even seeing him coming, even though she's in the lookout position. You are I have to win immunity next. Yes. When we do, we vote Boston Rob, okay? I looked over and my heart sank because Rob was standing right there. And he tells Amber, who asks if he plans on doing anything about this information, to which he says, no, he'll just hang on to it. I just walked up on uh, Jim and uh, Rupert. They have no intention of going to the final poll with us. Did you confront him about it? No. Are you going to? No. Which seems quite mature of him to do, but the bigger point here is that we now know that Rupert and Jenna Lewis are gunning for him at the final five. At the reward challenge, Boston Rob wins a brand new truck and Jeff tells him he can pick one person to go with him on the reward. So he picks Amber, which shocks Jeff for some reason. You gotta be Amber. <laughs> Second really? Second place and uh, been with me from day one. So it's Amber and Boston Rob. But don't worry, Jeff calls shotgun and he even compliments Rob on his driving. It's a real bromance they have going on. Nicely done, Mariano, what up? <laughs> This is a guy yeah. who knows his way around a truck. On that reward, as it turns out, whoever Rob brought along with him would get a car as well. So by osmosis, Amber has won a car too. Uh, Shut <laughs> up! Are you serious? Amber, right here. Another new car. They then sit back, cuddle, and watch a movie together as Amber labels this as their first date. And she loves that he didn't get her flowers. He got her a car. They are so in love and it is cute. On our first date, yeah, we did go to the movies. We did get some popcorn. And he gave me a car instead of flowers. Well, I'm time to know that. Me too. 
back at camp amber without any need to do so not being required to do this at all tells everyone willingly that she won a car and she is so excited about it this is 100 percent completely unnecessary information to give out that it can only work against her and rob in the long run i had the choice whether or not to tell people that i had won the car but i felt that holding that back from them just wasn't me. This news enrages Rupert and causes some extreme jealousy. It really helps motivate him to work on Big Tom to try and flip on Rob. They won a car apiece. I saved my candy. Well, it's easy to save your damn candy when you got a belly full and a new car. Or are you going to band with me and put Rob out? Pick that damn couple and break that couple apart. Big Tom, though, is stubborn and still thinks his alliance with Robin Amber is more valuable to him. He will not flip. As Boston and Robin Amber openly flirt and seem to be a little tipsy while doing so, everyone else looks so sullen, which is probably one of the most real scenes in the season, as life is always good for Robin Amber and uh, not really for anyone else. How old are you? Are you 18? I'm a good Catholic girl. Two Catholic girls, it's pretty sexy though. The next day, Rob wants to make sure that Tom and Rupert do not work together, so he devises what is a brilliant plan and even better in execution as he lies to Tom, like he has been doing all season, about Rupert. Tom takes offense and confronts Rupert on this lie. At this point, there's no guarantee that Tom's gonna stay loyal. I can't trust anybody. So pretty much what I did was I instigated Big Tom to start a fight with Rupert. But while Rob just stands aside, grinning from ear to ear, Tom and Rupert fight in a way that makes sure that neither of them are going to work with each other because they're both so sour and they do exactly what rob wanted them to do but without really knowing that did you or did you not tell me we needed to get rob off you were tired of watching him sit around and you needed to get rob off and you were sorry you made an alliance with him did you not tell me that at the immunity challenge boston rob wins immunity and guarantees his safety at this crucial vote boston rob with all 17 thinks he has a mystery word chaboga mogo boston rob yeah. wins immunity Prior to Tribal, Rob and Amber are in a conundrum. Should they vote out Rupert, who is conniving against them, or Big Tom, who had a secret alliance with Lex that Amber found out about and Rob later confirms? Rob and Amber talk to Tom about whether he has been floating the idea of voting out Rob, which according to Rupert, he has. Tom slips up and says, he's the swing vote. Amber says, no, he can't be the swing vote if they're in an alliance together. There is no swinging in an alliance. This attacking of Big Tom seems like it is not helpful at first, but by the end, her and Rob both have clearly intimidated him into not flipping on them. I'm the pawn. I told you I'm the swing vote. No, you're, with, you, you're you with us. There is no swing. We're a group. There's no swing. Because when you tell me, that's what I'm putting on that card. That's it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. However, this attack, which doesn't reflect poorly on Amber, does hurt Rob and Tom's relationship as he is basically unnecessarily labeling him a liar to his face, which is something Tom takes very personally as he has stated this season he wants to play this game with class. Why would you think I want with Rupert and Jen? I don't know. Why have you been feeding him stuff for the last two weeks telling him you want to get rid of me? At Tribal Council, Rob says that at the end of the game, it gets dicey. People scramble and lie and even get caught up in those same lies. Lex just keeps negatively reacting to Rob like he has been doing all season since he has been voted out. You can have some people where the paranoia starts to set in, people start to scramble, people start to get caught in their lies. When voting, Rob makes a personal attack against Tom. Pony ride's over. You're welcome for carrying you this far. They then make the move and vote out Big Tom, which is quite risky, and I'll explain that here in a minute. Big Tom, tribe has spoken. I heard it. Finale time. It is Rupert versus Jenna versus Boston Rob versus Amber, and Jeff arrives by boat to deliver them some breakfast, which Amber does say is her favorite meal of the day. Breakfast is my favorite meal of the day. So this mm. meal is huge huge out here. But it is crunch time. Two duos are facing off and Rob needs either Jenna or Rupert to flip to make sure there isn't a rock draw that could possibly blow up his game by sending him or Amber home. Him and Amber talk to Jenna Lewis basically saying vote with us. You have a chance to beat either of us in the final two but no one is beating Rupert. And it's completely up to you and I'm not gonna 
try to influence you one way or the other, but all I'm going to say is you have no chance to beat Rupert. Which is likely true. If they had voted Rupert at the previous tribal council, though, it is likely they could have easily have gotten Big Tom to vote with them to eliminate Jenna. But now they're sweating out over a rock draw that was completely avoidable. Regardless, her and Rob work on Jenna and make her scared of putting her entire game on the fate of a rock. To me, that's, that's ridiculous. Because you won't do it against her. That's my point. There's a possibility I could no, beat you... her. There's no possibility I could beat Rupert. This now time. I don't know. I'm not letting Rob push me into anything. We knew it was going to come down to a purple rock. So we gave her the option of voting out Rupert tonight. I didn't come 37 days reach into a bag and let a color decide my fate. At the immunity challenge, Amber pulls out a crucial win, ensuring that even if there is going to be a rock draw, she's safe. But that means Rob is the eligible one to go home between the two of them. Amber wins immunity! Guaranteed final three! At Tribal Council, Amber is doing some jury management, which we don't see much of, if at all, with Rob at any point. She talks about how in the Australian Outback, she was voted out by Colby and was hurt, but later on realized that she had been outplayed by him, and that is what this game is all about, so she votes for him to win. Great speech in front of the jury, and something that Rob is not doing at all, which is understanding how to persuade his jury to like him or even vote for him. In Australia, I had an alliance, um, or what I thought was an alliance. But when it came down to it, I actually ended up voting for the person who broke their alliance with me. Even though this speech by Amber is a complete lie, though I doubt anyone on the jury knows that, Colby never cast one vote against Amber on her first season, and it was actually Tina who did so, and she didn't vote for Tina. So either Amber is implying that Colby did vote against her and she voted for him, or <laughs> she voted for Tina. But no matter what she's implying, it's all a lie. This is because Amber is the brains of the operation. She's outwitting everyone here. Thankfully for Rob, him and Amber do convince Jenna to make a move and not pull rocks, and Rupert is voted out. Rupert, the tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. Now it is all down to one last immunity challenge, and on the way to it, they have their rites of passage, which has Amber revealing to us that she is proud to have made it to the end, but also feels a bit guilty knowing that she is responsible for a lot of the players being voted out of the game. It made me feel proud to be standing where I was standing, but also a little guilty knowing that I ended this game for a lot of those people. At the final three immunity challenge, it is the classic hand on a hard idol challenge. Don't move your hand or your foot, or you're done. And what do you know? Jenna, you lifted your foot. I lifted my foot? You lifted your back foot. But at this point, who cares who wins? Well, actually, Amber does, as she tries to convince Rob to drop, which he agrees to. You've had it a million times. A million times. Okay. Jeff then quickly talks boss Rob out of this idea, and I am not sure why. Amber is running the show, and this move just further proves that. Amber says she just wants to win, and Rob says, well, you'll have to beat me to do so. You wouldn't want me to just let you win. You'd want to beat me, <laughs> right? I just want to win, honestly. Well, you're going to have to beat me. Then. However, Boston Rob does win immunity due to a slip up by Amber, and it really doesn't matter, as it is clear as day what will be happening next. For the last time, immunity. You're going to the final two. Before Tribal, Rob floats the idea of maybe taking Jenna Lewis instead, but he knows that this would be stupid for his game in almost every regard, and the jury would not respect him in the least. He then wonders if Amber has actually been conning him this whole time, which is an idea the story has been subtly pushing this whole season, but is a hard one to admit considering how this is all going to end. But Amber did ride my coattails the entire way. I don't know, maybe she conned me the whole way. Maybe it's the biggest scam in the history of Survivor. At Tribal Council, Rob talks about how even now, when everything seems to basically be a lock, paranoia is still running rampant. Lex and Shan both react negatively to him. And you can tell, even at this stage, still, there's paranoia. I don't know necessarily that I even have a shot of winning against either of them. Rob then casts the sole vote, and Jenna is voted out. Jenna, the tribe has spoken. Before Tribal Council, we get a montage of Rob and Amber being lovey-dovey. She says he makes her feel happy, safe, important, and proud of who she is. To be able to spend 39 days now 
with a person who always makes you happy is just amazing. In fact, Rob even asks her, what fish would you like to eat? And she tells him, ah, uh, not the black fish. I'd actually prefer more of the blue fish. And what does he get? Exactly what she wants. The black one or the blue one? I don't like the black ones. You don't like the black ones? Well, I mean, not as much. Oh, last fish. This guy's gonna be the last fish I eat. But we do hear from her that this is not some long con. Her relationship with Rob is real and it is exactly what got her this far in the game. And it turned into something real. And now we have an amazing bond. And I'm so glad that that was my strategy in the beginning. I'm completely at peace right now, you know that? Mm -hmm. Me too. I feel 100% relaxed. And right before Final Tribal, Rob tells us that he gave 110% every day, no matter what. Really putting another notch into the belt for the supposed underdog story. I did everything I wanted to do out here. I did it to the best of my ability. I gave 110% every single day. <laughs> Final Tribal Council, Amber versus Boston Rob. Will the jury recognize and reward how Amber was truly running the show behind the scenes, or will Rob be credited with all of the moves since he was the face of their alliance? Let's find out. For Rob's opening speech, he is pretty solid. Now this is important to note as once the next juror talks, Rob will tank his entire final travel council performance, a la Colby Donaldson in the Australian Outback. He is empathetic to how they feel. He explains his approach to the game. He mentions his faults, but says that those faults were unfortunately necessary to get to where he is now. He asks that they all take an honest look at his game and consider all the moves that he made. It isn't really a bad opener at all. I would like you guys to consider how I play the game as a player, always trying to do well for my team at the same time trying to look out for myself. Amber's opening speech leaves a lot to be desired. Usually the opening is a good way to set the tone of how you'll be approaching everyone's questions and to make it clear about what your gameplay has been all season. She essentially asked the jury to not be sore losers and recognizes that it was a lot of luck that got her to the end, not at all owning any of the moves she made in this game. I think the reason why I'm sitting here right now is luck. All of you guys for not voting me off and because of my lines with Rob. Lex is the first juror and he feels betrayed, which we would have had to have been blind to not see this coming from him. He says that how you play this game is a representation of who you really are. He goes on to say that Rob sold out his friends and character for some money. Clearly this is a lost cause for Rob and Lex and uh, Lex is gonna be voting for Amber. I mean, he doesn't even ask Rob a question. He just lays it into him. What kind of a friend are you, Rob? What kind of a friend were you to me? You asked me to do you a favor, bro to bro, friend to friend. And I did the only thing I could do. You sold out your values, you sold out your character, and you sold out your friends for a stack of greenbacks. Kathy is next, and she asks Rob about what he thinks people will think about him after he made all these moves in the game. Rob says Lex has him all sorts of shaken up after he lambasted him, so Rob says he isn't sure about how he feels about his game now. This feels like the wrong move to make from an outside perspective. He should stick to his guns from his opening speech and explain why the moves he made were necessary, why they were the only ones he could make to reach the end, but he has now been rattled and it comes across as weak, but it ultimately has been shown this season that Kathy is more mad at Amber than Rob. I'm still floored by Alexis thing right now. Looking back, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about the game anymore. And she asks Amber if her relationship with Rob is real, which Amber assures her it definitely is. I will tell you that yes, I have a genuine relationship with Rob and I definitely hope to continue our relationship afterwards. However, Kathy's vote seems like it is definitely for Rob, despite how he completely betrayed her and Lex once the merge hit. Now, him and Kathy were both on Marquesas after all and have been friends for years since that season. I can't fault Amber for not getting her vote. Rupert is third and he asks Rob, why should Rob get his vote? And Rob nails exactly what Rupert values. Why should I give you my vote? Because you're a man of your word. That's why you should give me a vote. 
<laughs> and asks Amber what she did to get to the end. She talks about taking the game day by day, and then at the tribe swap, she fought a lot to be saved. She also says she never lost focus, and this is a lame, non-specific answer. It does absolutely nothing to show why she should get anyone's votes. To get to the final two, I played this game the best way I know how, and honestly, that was taking it day by day. And so I guess. The main reason why I think I played the game well is that I never lost my focus. Alicia is fourth and unlike Rupert, doesn't make Rob feel good at all. She comes in hot and rips Rob a new one. Rob seems weak again as she asks him to give one word to explain how he played and he says, Competitively. Excuse me? Competitively. He had no chance of getting this vote at this point anyways, due to his own mistake in making a deal with Alicia that he broke. She and his fifth and she asks each of them to give three reasons why the other one should win. This is a very blah question and it feels pointless as she made it clear earlier this season that she is on board with Amber winning since she and recognizes her as the mastermind. Jenna Lewis is next and she asks each of them what they are going to do if they win a million dollars. Another lame question just like Shan's that will undoubtedly not affect any votes. Big Tom is the last juror and he asks Amber why she should win over Rob. She says crap, I didn't want to have to answer this question. But essentially she says because she lied to Tom less than Rob. Rob had promised him a final two and multiple times throughout the season, including the family visit when Tom was talking to his son, he says that he plans on staying in the final two with Rob. And Amber never promised him anything like that. While not amazing from her, it is actually a reason to vote for her. We really didn't break our word to each other, whereas you and Rob did. If you're basing your votes on who had a stronger word and who broke their word, I think I didn't really break my word as much to you as Rob did. But Rob blows this so, so hard. Instead of treating Tom with respect and giving a good answer, and maybe even an apology, he instead accuses Tom of being a liar, when humility and sucking up to Tom could have easily flipped this vote. Why should I vote for you and not Amber? You and I know inside what really happened in terms of who said what and who lied about what. In other words, you voted me off because I was going to try to kick you off? You did try to get me kicked off. All right. Tom, of course, makes Rob feel like an idiot for making Tom feel like an idiot. I just want to say no hard feelings. No hard feelings, Tom. <laughs> Don't be stupid, stupid. I may have failed for seven once. I failed for it twice. Not this time. For his closing speech, Rob apologizes to everyone, which would be fine if he didn't continue to back off framing everything as game moves. He really needs to lean in and just paint the picture, which he is great at doing when he's talking to us, as being, this was the only moves he could make. He was the underdog and he had to get himself to the end and this was the only way he could guarantee that. He unequivocally mismanages the jury, aside from Rupert. He doesn't understand what to say to each of them. He can't humble himself at all. He doesn't respect the people who need to feel respected the most and he basically fumbles at the goal line. For someone who knows how to craft a narrative and make us root for him, he fails here in crunch time to craft a narrative which he seems to be so good at doing. He doesn't understand his own jury despite knowing them in real life outside of the game. I'm really having a tough time even finding words, to tell you the truth fumbling over all my answers. Amber then closes out Final Tribal by saying how the jury taught her a lot about herself. She feels guilty for a lot of the actions she made in game and she says she will take what she learned and use it in life. What is most important here though is how she is empathetic towards the jury and she claims she was honest with all of her answers. I know it was very hard for you guys all to express your feelings and be completely honest with us in every answer that I gave tonight. I was completely honest with you. Normally, I skip ahead to the vote reveal, but let's look at what each juror says in regards to Rob as they vote. Jenna Lewis says that him and Amber both needed to just own their games, and she is right. I'd like to say that both of you should just step up. Be proud of the way you play. You made it to the final two, you beat us all. Alicia burns Rob real good by saying how she promised to never write his name down, and she is keeping that promise. Do you remember back in the middle of the game and I promised you that I would never write your name down. I'm a woman of my work. And what is the real kicker? The vote Rob probably could have gotten had he not treated him like such trash on his way out the door and even had been respectful to him at Final Tribal. Big Tom says he feels hurt by Boston Rob. When you find out the true story, Maybe you can call and apologize. Kathy then votes for Rob, but only because of the friendship they have outside of the game, and not because of anything he did this season, which is very telling. It is time to reveal the vote, but before that, Rob has one big question to ask Amber. I love you with all my heart. Will you marry me? 
me. And the votes are revealed. Kathy, Rupert, and Jenna voted for Rob, while Lex, Alicia, Big Tom, and Sheehan all vote for Amber, meaning Amber wins four to three. The winner of Survivor All-Stars. So let's break this down. How is Boston Rob as a character? Amazing. This is the same guy from Arcasis, except maybe a little bit more mature. Instead of lusting for Sarah Jones and her enhanced body, he falls for the cute sweet girl and actually proposes marriage to her. And spoiler alert, they are still married today now with four kids. In the game, the way he can paint himself as an underdog who he should be rooting for and give confessionals that makes us feel like we are taking this journey along with him is fascinating. No one else in the first eight seasons could do this quite as well as him except maybe Rob Sesternino. Boss and Rob was mostly a villain just having fun and steamrolling the competition. He caused most of the drama this season with his cutthroat gameplay and yet he caused some of the most memorable moments as well. He is 1000% a villain unless he is talking to us. Then all of a sudden he's a hero. Lex's betrayal is such a Rob father move by him and yet it all seems like it is Lex's fault that this happened even though Rob is the one who massively lied. And uh, by the way, Amber lied as well. Alicia is definitely right that they need to make fire on day two and not work on the shelter. And yet Rob paints it like she is wrong and he's the only one around here that we can trust to get right information from. In a way, he's Rob fathering us just like he does to everyone else on the Shapira tribe. He makes for a fantastic layered character. So let's break this down. How is Amber as a character? Pleasant, calming, and loved by all. She is not an explosive personality like quite a few people this season were, but she was always there being her nice, charming self, flashing that smile, listening, and just being friends with everyone. No one ever disliked her like they did her partner in crime. She was the glue on the Shapira tribe, and despite not making the best television, that that calming mom-like figure is what is needed to keep a group intact. Unfortunately, the show did very little to reveal much to us about who Amber is beyond that and really did a great disservice, especially since they knew she was going to be the winner and it isn't like we learned all that much about her on her last season that would carry over to this season as she was pretty much the sidekick to Jerry Manthe there as well and here she's pretty much portrayed as the sidekick again with Rob. The show doesn't really give her much character depth besides being Rob's girlfriend. Now, how was Boston Rob as a strong strategist. Before we get really deep into my thoughts on a strategy, I need to clarify all this by saying that he was so much better here than he was on Marquesas. However, we just got done watching him blow it hard at the end and we saw how he simply doesn't understand his own jury. No matter how many great moves he made along the way, he hurt the jury personally. He treated four of them as crap and really should have lost five to two, but his friendship with Kathy from outside of the game made it closer than it should have been. He played Survivor ruthlessly. When he started the season and told us this would be no fun, he meant it. He put his foot on the gas pedal and never let up. His foot was on everyone's necks and they were not going to do anything he didn't want them to, for better or for worse, until the final tribal council. His friends were ripping him into shreds and he is only human. What is made worse is that he does know them outside of these 39 days, so he really should know what they value. But he did make many great moves along the way. Him causing Rupert and Tom to fight was a stroke of genius. He helped save Amber's hide right before the merge, and he convinced Jenna to not go to rocks. There are so many more moves, but Rob was a huge hit and miss sometimes this season, but we all love a player that swings for the fences like he did here. Now, how is Amber as a strategist? She has quite a few weak areas in her game, as does Boston Rob, but her strength is her social game, something that he lacked. She is beloved almost all game by everyone, and even at Final Tribal, no one has sour grapes towards her. She worked smarter, not harder. She was the brains, and Rob was the brawn and it worked. No one previously in Survivor had ever formed a duo like this that covers each other's weaknesses and just dominates all game. They were essentially one super player that had two votes at every tribal. Could Amber have gotten to the end of one if Boston Rob wasn't there? Maybe, but way more unlikely. But the same goes for Boston Rob. Love it or hate it, they are both good players who joined forces to crush everyone. He was the hothead and she was the calming presence that contained him just enough to not blow up their game. Almost like an owner with a dog. The dog may think it's in charge, but the person holding the leash is really running the show. And it seems like only Shan truly figured out that 
while playing the game. And by the time she did, the game was almost over. And just in case you are wondering what happened with these two since they played this season and proposed, this is the spoiler section. So click off now if you don't want to know. They have since married on national television. They played on The Amazing Race twice where they both performed really well as one great team, had four kids, Boston Rob returned to play Survivor three more times and won one of those seasons and even had a season of Survivor where he is literally a mentor along with Sandra Diaz Twine and they both have giant statues of themselves on an island. It's insane to see. And Amber actually comes back to play one more time on the all winter season. They're still together as of the time of this video and considering how they still seem to this day, like when you see them together, I doubt that anything will ever change with them and it is simply wonderful to see. Thanks for watching. If you like the content you see here, then please support me and this channel on Patreon. Your financial support makes all of this possible. So thank you. And thank you for watching.